vape back again. How are you, folks? People hate when I vape. Uh, there's one person in particular that hates it, and I don't know why, but let me live my life, damn it. This is I, Josh Potter, here for another episode of The Josh Potter Show. Thank you so much for coming back. We got a solo mish today, baby. And, uh, well, I got Alex with me, so it's kind of like a solo mission. But nevertheless, I would like to thank all the good people who came out to see me in Baltimore and in Cleveland this past weekend. Had a wonderful time, especially in Cleveland. It's so fun, you know. I When I used to live there, I used to hate it there. But when I go visit, I really have a blast. Drank at some old haunts. Had a good time in Cleveland, and uh, Baltimore was pretty fun, too. Um, But I will be moving forward on the road. We've got Dallas coming up next. Going to be co-headlining the Dallas Comedy Club with Jessica Michelle Singleton, who we shall be having on the program probably very uh, before that at some point. Uh, Dallas Comedy Club, July 26th and 27th. And then we are going into August already, folks. Omaha, Nebraska. I'm coming to the Funny Bone August 15th. Des Moines, Iowa coming to your Funny Bone August 16th and 17th. Coming to Laugh Boston in Boston, Massachusetts, of course, August 24th. And then we roll into September. We got Portland, Maine, Long Island, Skankfest, which is going to be exciting. So go to thejoshpotter.com, thejoshpotter.com, and make sure you buy all your tickets. And you can ask for me to come to your city if I'm not already coming, because we're always adding dates. I'm not one of these people who has a tour. I'm a person who is always on the road if God is willing to let me be that way. Uh, Hopefully I'm always on the road, you know? Anywho, what do you say we just get right into the program today, folks? Oh, by the way, rate, review, subscribe, please. If you're already doing that, thank you. You're a soldier. You're a roach soldier. But keep doing it. Spread the word about the show. I feel like I'm doing some of my best pods ever, unless people are watching. I don't know what the hell's going on. Is it all the teachers that are... I don't know what's (laughs) happening. Either way, I'm having a great time, and I do appreciate the roach loyals. Who are coming out to the shows, saying what's up at the comedy store, yelling out. I had a person yell out, Roach, from the comedy. I just was doing a random set in the main room when I got back on Saturday. People, someone in the crowd, Roach. I love that. Keep it up, baby. Oh, boy. But Baltimore, I will say, I had a fun time. And thank you to the people who did come in Baltimore. But I had a hell of a time getting there. I'll tell you. I woke up. I f***ed up. I came off of 48 hours in Joshua Tree doing acid and i hadn't slept for like two days i mean i slept maybe in total two hours came home slept a great deal of time did behind the jeans and then i was supposed to take a red eye that night to baltimore and i decided you know what i'm gonna treat myself i'm gonna push the flight to 8 a.m i I deserve a little longer of a sleep i'm staying home i'm gonna just go to bed early and wake up and just deal with it during the day and then I go, I'm like a zombie going to uh, in the Uber to the airport. And I leave my fanny pack in the Uber when I get out. It wasn't around my body. I just like sat down and put it next to me. And then I just got out of the car like an idiot leaving my fanny, which has my passport, my credit cards, pretty much all the important stuff. My vape. I mean, I can't lose that. So... I couldn't even get on the plane if I wanted to at that point. And, you know, I'm not exactly uh, there super early. Uh, And the the man uh, who was driving me did come back and he gave it to me pretty fast, uh, but not fast enough for me to make the flight. So then there's not a lot of flights direct to Baltimore or even layover wise to Baltimore. And anything and everything remaining would have had me get in after the show was way over. Like I would have missed the show by a mile. 1130 p.m., 10 o'clock even p.m. And so I had to fly into D.C. One flight there. I get in at 6. Oh, boy. The show's at 7.30. I land at 6. Going to be a little late for the show, it's looking like. Oh, my God. Then I land. There's a medical emergency on the fucking plane. When we land, they go, we're sorry, folks. We're going to need a couple of more minutes to deplane. We have a bit of a medical emergency, so we're just going to need to get the people out. And I'm thinking, I'm like, who's having a medical emergency? Like, I was pissed about it. But And then I, I don't know what happened. Nobody... Had a, nobody got off the plane. They just let us deplane after 20 minutes or something. And there was no fireman. There was no ambulance person. None of them ever came on the plane. So maybe the person had a change of heart. I don't have a medical emergency. Let's just get off this thing. I don't even want to wait for the ambulance to get here to get me off. I'll just walk off. It's right there. 
give me a wheelchair or something. I don't know what the hell happened. Um, but it helped make me much later. And I didn't get to my show, which was starting at 730 until about 830. And I was just fried, dude. I mean, I was traveling all day coming off of what I thought was going to be like a relaxing reset. And it was to a degree. But boy, oh boy, jumping into two East Coast gigs. Right after that was probably a, I probably should have planned things a little bit better, but here we are. We're back. We're back in action, baby. We're reset. We're ready to go. The Hawk Tui girl is all the blo- uh, all of a buzz. Well, this is the country we live in now. I mean, I saw the debates. <laughs> I can't believe she didn't come up in the debate. You know, Hawk Tui, stand, stand back and stand by. You know, <laughs> they talked about golf for Christ's sake, and the Hawk Tui girl is just kind of like I find her to be very like uh, wholesome. In a weird way. I know she's talking about spitting on a but I find her to be quite wholesome. And uh, it's kind of brought our country together. Everyone's like, oh, cute, the Hawk Tui girl. It's so cute, you know? That's crazy. I mean, that's how far we've come with blowjobs, folks. And the Hawk Tui girl even making it on a, a Major League Baseball broadcast. Beep, 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 after Catherine Blanford commented how long that was last week people were like it's not long enough (laughs) so i thought i'd hit it again there but yeah so in major league baseball especially when it comes to the broadcast we've talked about it time and time again often a pillar of righteousness even though there have been some many fuck-ups that we love to highlight here on the program but it's often a time of people making sure they don't say the right thing if they do say in a double entendre or an innuendo all of a sudden it gets to be like in first grade where they're snickering in the booth or what have you but i was impressed to hear the hawk tui girl mentioned on a broadcast let's watch the video here he just spit on his shoulder <laughs> as he was sitting there and went to spit a little humid out i guess and mouth getting a little bit dry didn't quite clear his arm and just landed right on the right on the shoulder hawk tour <laughs> <Yeah. What? laughs> let's do it again <laughs> And they'd have everyone. Know, that's how cultural this thing is. I mean, she's the most famous woman in the world. It's crazy. The broadcaster could just go a hawk tool, right? That's all. That's what all the kids are saying. <laughs> Hilarious. I mean, it's wild how. Uh, I mean, maybe this is what the Bible was talking about uh, when it said that you know we're gonna fall into de- degeneracy. And, but that's. I mean, the hawk. My mother knows who the hawk tui girl is. I mean, that's how. <laughs> Look, what is this? This shirt? What is this you're showing? This is this is just her. This is this is the original. Yeah, she's a cutie. She was just now she's making the podcast rounds. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how far she can stretch this. I mean, I'm willing to. I'm along for the ride. I can't wait to see how far she goes. But maybe she goes so far down the podcast because she's going to do podcast. She might even do her own podcast. Maybe we get her here in the Roach Motel. So would you Would you have her on the show? Oh, would I have her on the show? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like having the most. Fa- would I have the president on the show? That's I'll, even. I'll reach out. Dude, I mean, the Hawk Tui girl's making the rounds. She's coming out here to LA at some point. I'd love to get her on the program. I don't know. I don't think I'm big enough to get her on the show at this point. I don't think. I mean, golly. Hawk Tui, indeed. And it's so funny because uh, she just did like her very first interview with uh, Brianna Chicken Fry. And uh, she's. Uh, Brianna is dating. Um, what the hell is that? Uh, one of those singers, the Luke Bryan, Zach Bryan, Brian Zach's, I, I, one of those ones. I can't remember. Uh, it's Luke Bryan, perhaps the, the mo- Zach Bryan, Zach Bryan. Fuck. I don't know why there is a Luke Bryan that we've gone over 100%. this. They're all an amalgam in my brain, but she's dating Zach Bryan. So I think they were at a festival or something in Nashville. The Hawk Tui lady was there and Brianna like, you know, is dating. Z- so she, I mean, the, she went on stage with uh, <laughs> Zach Bryan and sang Revival, whatever that song is. And uh, then, you know, Brianna's like, do my podcast. So she got the first interview with the Hawk Tui girl. She has access to those types of things, Brianna Chicken Fry. And, uh, you know, she was mentioning things like the Internet has completely gotten every fact about her wrong regarding like her occupation. And uh, did she get she quit her job. She worked in a spring factory, which is 
wild. I mean, they have those still. (laughs) I think that's cool. I like when a girl works in a factory. That's my vibe for sure. We don't have many of them here in L.A., unfortunately, but I know in the I'm hearing more and more. And I I can't believe sometimes that there are still people that work in factory. And I'm not saying that in like a bemoaning sense. I'm glad there are. I wish there because factory jobs used to be all like in Buffalo. That's all they would talk about. All the factory jobs that left. And I'm like, oh, so factory jobs just died at some point when I was a baby or like in the 90s and things became tech jobs. So I'm happy to hear that there are but a spring factory of all things. I figured they could get a robot to make one of those, you know, like how I mean, how it's just a cookie cutter sort of thing at this point, just widgets and whatnot. Uh, But the Hawk to a girl gives me hope and a dark time in our country. I'm so happy that she exists and I'm happy that the country has embraced her. And she seems like a pure hearted woman. She's not uh, somebody that is going to have scandal attached to them. We're not going to have to worry about the downfall of the Hawk to a girl. I think she has a good head on her shoulders. I could very well one day regret saying these words. (laughs) She could be a menace to society down the road. But nevertheless, I do wish her all the best. And I do hope that it stays as wholesome as it is despite the fact that it's all based on her uh, drunkenly talking about spitting on a dick before you uh, you suck on it. <laughs> I don't know if it's picking up out there in, uh, in the episode, but a car alarm has been going off for the last, like, 15 minutes, I feel like, and it's never going to stop. It's driving me mad. Uh, I Sometimes I can only hear things, though. I don't think I'm getting it. But I don't think it's going to get picked up on the audio, but I just wanted to address that I know it ex- it's happening, and uh, if it's driving me insane, frankly. <laughs> but uh, if, so if it's driving you insane out there, if you can hear it, I apologize. I'm just as uh, annoyed by it as you are. But uh, you know what else I'm annoyed by is this story about Matt Stafford's wife. And when I saw this, I'm just like, what are you doing? This is the opposite of the Huck Tui girl. This right here is a grade A idiot woman. I'm telling you, she is always putting them. Here's the thing. I always kind of like looked at her with a side eye, Kelly Stafford, because she often, you know, goes on podcasts. I think she has a podcast of her own at one point, but she was very out in the public, which was kind of refreshing because a lot of these wives stay hidden. Maybe they tweet something, whatever, here and there. But she always seemed kind of like the first lady of uh, quarterbacks. You know what I mean? She was out there saying things uh, that it was like, oh, this is nice to hear. Yeah, she's rooting for her husband. She would say statements about like, you know, cheering and cheering him on and opposing uh, things. And she would clap back at opposing fans, things like that. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. All right. You know, she's doing it in a way that wasn't so outrageous. She had a couple missteps, but who who hasn't in this world? You know what I'm saying? People are looking for people to falter. But this one was just absolutely heinous. And I can't believe that she did this to her husband, who by all accounts has been with her and faithful and in a great marriage and a loving marriage for many, many years at this point. His entire professional career and even some of his college career. She uh, went on a podcast and She well, I mean, we have the tape, right? There they are right there in college. They were together even before he was drafted into the NFL when he was a Georgia Bulldog. And uh, we have the clip, correct? Yes. The the one where she this is what she did. This is what she said. This is what she did. And uh, it explains exactly why I think she is a idiot woman. And perhaps queef of the week. Queef of the week. Wait, so was he trying to casually date and you were all in? Oh, yeah, girl. Anyways, long story short, it wasn't that cute of a relationship at first. I hated oh. him. I loved him. I dated the backup to piss You were him toxic? Off, which oh, worked. yes. He was like, that'll do pause it. it. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. What a toxic lady. That She's like, it, it wasn't cute at first. And I thought it was like, oh, maybe he was an asshole or something like that. But it sounds like she was just like, I hated him. I loved him. It sounds like she was one of these like... F- toxic flaky ladies she literally said i did his backup well yeah then well that's the thing that that that's the thing that is the crux of this she reveals that she dated the backup to piss him off and i've deduced i deduced before the articles came out like when i saw this the day came out this is a little bit of a maybe a week or so old at this point but i deduced who the backup was because matt stafford (laughs) only played a couple of years there and it's joe cox who now is a coach uh, I forget where jo- Joe Cox is like a tight ends coach for what is he the tight ends coach for? Does it say I'm not finding it? Alabama, Alabama, Crimson Tide. Uh, so 
you know, he's got a job, he's got a family, he's got, you know, a life, and she's bringing this up, and evidently he's a bad boy. Ooh, the bad boy, and I used him to get jealous. So now this guy's like, oh, I mean, like, maybe he's single and, like, gets laid and shit, and he's like, yeah, (laughs) sick, like, look at that. But uh, it's been found out that he has a family and a wife, and it's kind of probably, like, blurring his shit. Who knows how long he's been dating his wife? Was he dating his wife in college? Was it a little messy there? Does he have to explain this to her? He's like, come on, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, <laughs> Kelly Stafford. So go back a little bit when she hits that little note, because then it gets, uh, you know, it reveals a little bit more here. Go ahead. I hated him. I loved him. I dated the backup to piss him off. Which oh, worked. yes. Which was like, That'll do it. He was the bad boy, too. Like, Matthew's so sweet and Southern gentleman and all yeah. that stuff. And the, the backup was the complete opposite. Yep, yep. Ooh, and it it upset him. So they lived in the same dorm because athletes lived in the same dorm, and he would see my car there. And so at one point, he, like, waited and fought and followed me out and got in my car and wouldn't get out. Oh. And he was like, like, this is so hot. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> working. Yeah. This is the most toxic like, I don't, shit. He's not right for you. And I was like, who do you, what? you can't tell me that. The, the most toxic, I can't believe, I mean, like, it worked out for Matt Stafford. He married her. He must have been very much in love. I've had my axis thrown off quite like that in the past where I'm like, stop dating this asshole. <laughs> you, he doesn't even like you. But, I mean, for her to reveal that voluntarily, like, I guess it's a little, like, I, I like a giggly girl story. Like, they're just talking, like, uh, ch- chicks or whatever. But it sounds like the most toxic thing i've ever heard in my life it's on a podcast is public that feels like something you keep you, you keep like i don't know maybe you tell yeah joe cox is a professional class. man it's not yeah. like people can figure out who the backup quarterback for the georgia bulldogs was while matt stafford played that's not a hard yeah, wikipedia search like still in the league and like still like has a public i don't know maybe that comes out when he retires I don't know. maybe it, it doesn't like come out at all maybe career. it just yeah. you know talk about it amongst friends it's a little behind the scenes story like wow this happened this is like before we met it was a little rocky there you know and it's like a little winky face sort of story but to say it publicly seems insane to me and matt stafford's just like what the fuck this poor he's a sweet southern guy he's never done anything and now he's like you know he's just concentrating on football he's like great now he has to deal with this this is the thing folks you're probably like what's the big deal josh why why does should matt stafford carry should be secure in knowing that he's been with the woman for this long and doesn't make a difference anymore and she her cucking him on a fucking podcast shouldn't make a difference one way or the other. Well, uh, he has to go play football. And there's going to be people in the locker room that maybe lose respect for the man after this. There are certain ilk of men out there that would look at that and go, Matt Stafford is a little bitch boy. And they would use that against him, is all I'm saying, especially in a trash talk. Oh, Joe Cox this, Joe Cox that, Joe Cox fucked your bitch, I'm going to do it next. Stuff like that. (laughs) I mean, I just thought of that now, and I'm not even a professional (laughs) trash talker out there. And I'm especially not uh, one of the uh, The, uh, inner city blacks who are really good at trash talk. (laughs) Keep that in mind. Would you respect this woman more if she had come out and said, like, this was all to motivate him to make the Georgia football team better? This did not make the Georgia football team better. (laughs) If anything, it caused locker room strife, and women do that on (laughs) occasion i mean uh there could be an extreme situation of that with like delante west and lebron james where delante west fucked lebron's mom i mean uh that was a pretty big deal Corey perry with uh connor bedard i don't there was no substantiation to that but the rumor was he fucked connor bedard's mom <laughs> so like a girlfriend thing i know that there was like golden tate type in uh golden tate i forget who he it was on I don't even remember which team it was on now, maybe the Seahawks, but I thought Golden Tate and somebody uh, got into it about a girl. And I think it was Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, I put two and two together at the last second. It was Russell Wilson's ex-wife, I think, was fucking around with Golden Tate. Is that what it says there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says her last name was Ashton. Yeah, it was the woman that uh, Russell Wilson entered the league uh, with, I believe, married to. Uh, when he was drafted into the NFL. Ashton Mead. He upgraded yeah. quite a bit with Sierra, but that was, yes, Russell Wilson got drafted in the third round, was with this woman, and I don't remember if Golden Tate fucked her before or after they were divorced, uh, but that caused a lot of strife in that locker room. It's never a good thing, is what I'm saying. She wasn't motivating anybody, and she did come out and apologize, despite being a... Idiot woman! She says... Uh, in her Instagram 
she wrote a, an apology to J- uh, Joe Cox and his family. It says, to this beautiful family, I'm sorry for the media storm that has happened last week that made its way into your lives. You had zero involvement in what I spoke about, and in fact, it was y'all's relationship in college that I looked up to and wanted for me and math and wanted for me and Matthew. So she's acknowledging that the woman that Joe Cox is married to was with him in college and perhaps she was fucking that up. That's wild. Now, because they're like, well, tell me the timeline on when you were fucking each other here. And maybe it made an awkward discussion for old Joe Cox there. Unfortunately, you were the couple that uh, everyone. This is so poorly written, by the way. Is this the, is this on the copy or is this how she poorly wrote it? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a, the, this is like a word for OMG word stuff. Yeah. You were the couple that everyone thinks Matthew and I oh thinks, I guess, Matthew and I was. Y'all were the UGA QB and cheerleader that met and never let go. I love y'all. So it's like, did you try and that she made an apology? Is she acknowledging something even extra now where she's saying, I apologize for trying to fuck up Joe Cox's relationship during my games with Matthew Stafford? That's crazy. She didn't need to share. And then she shared a picture of uh, Joe Cox with his current wife and children. That's a little weird, too. Like, say thanks for doxing my kids <laughs> and bringing up. I mean, this woman is a menace. Oh, my thing isn't uh, playing anymore. Should, sorry, dragon. Idiot woman. Oh, it's because yeah, we didn't want an ad to play. That's funny. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I I can't believe this woman going around doing this. You keep saying this, you way. idiot woman. <laughs> idiot woman. Stop saying things. Idiot golly oh boy oh boy well we got another sports story before we round out the sports here and i just oh we got a couple actually this one comes to us by way of dirty dave josh potter show at gmail.com is where you can send things in again josh potter show at gmail.com these are a little more quicker ones but i don't know if you all fo- folks know about the story of jamarcus russell perhaps the uh biggest bust in NFL football history, he was the number one overall pick to the old Oakland Raiders back in, I do believe, 2007. And uh, he was awful. I mean, the wor- I mean, they gave him a whole bunch of money, and he was dog shit. And it changed the way that people pay draft picks eventually. Because they were like, why are we we're giving the first overall pick all this crazy money? What if they're a bust? So it became a structured thing now, no matter what. No matter who the number one overall pick is, it's basically the same amount of money. Well, you'd think Jamarcus Russell, after fleecing the Oakland Raiders for all that money, uh, that he'd be just fine and well off despite washing out of the NFL. Well, no, he came up in the old uh, crime report. Dirty Dave sent this in. Uh, he's facing a lawsuit uh, that, and he was also fired from his job, which was a volunteer assistant coach. Uh, and he, he's facing a lawsuit accusing him of taking a $74,000 check meant as a donation to the school. He just pocketed it, they say. According to ESPN, a local business owner wrote, wrote the check and said Russell approached him about a donation to help the Williamson High School football team purchase weight room equipment. The school said they never received the check, and Russell reportedly deposited it in a credit union before withdrawing 55000 of it. He's like, no, I'm just going to pay it back. I'm going to take it for now. It'll eventually get to the school. I'm going to take it for now. I didn't even use the whole thing, 55 Gs. I just put it in there because I needed to just, like, you know, transfer some things over. I was going to give it to the school eventually. These are all the things I'm, I would say if I was Russell, uh, Jamarcus Russell. Russell is not allowed to be on the school's campus any longer. Jamarcus Russell was relieved from his volunteer coaching duties at Williamson High School during the fall of last year, Mobile County Public schools official told WKRG Sports, Russell was the first overall pick in 20. Oh, yeah, we already know all that. He was dog shit. He was dog shit, and uh, he earned more than $36.4 million in salary and bonuses during his very short three seasons in the NFL. Well, also, KL Skater Boy sent this in. I love when uh, one is Dirty Dave and KL Skater Boy. Some people just give their real names, Roach Reporters. Some people... I like when people have little nom de plumes. So thank you very much. Josh Potter show at gmail.com. And people sent me this up and down, I got to say, and I don't really know what to make of it. The Buffalo Bills, my favorite football team in the whole world, part of my heart and soul. The Buffalo Bills are proud to support the National Gay Flag Football League. And that's weird that they would put flag football. I mean, why can't they just play regular football, first of all? Like, 
they're all they're just they're dudes too. They can't play right. They got to make it flag football. They're like, no, they're gay, so they can only do flag football. And plus, going into a, I mean, I don't know if they're going to have announcers for this, but boy, oh boy, having flag football be right in the uh, name of the league of a gay league at that lends itself to some missteps when speaking. People are going to screw up flag football. <laughs> when they're talking about it and it happens to be the national gay flag football league that's going to get fucked up you know it's going <laughs> to happen folks maybe they're not going to be on television for that the ngffl the abbreviation even looks kind of uh problematic <laughs> even a little bit with a sponsorship to launch a chapter in buffalo the ngffl <laughs> it still just looks so weird it's all the it's all the problematic letters i don't know why i mean maybe my dyslexia or something is coming into play it's a non-profit sports organization that seeks to promote positive social and athletic enjoyment of american flag football all right let's make it gay i don't know why i mean that's fine i don't mind that but what's the the juxtaposition of the two things why can't gay guys play regular football so why do you got to make the flag football gay? That's also mm -hmm. kind of like my uh, two cents here. We are thrilled to bring inclusive flag football to Buffalo with the support of the Buffalo Bills. Golly, I'm scared to say flag football so many times. Let's see <laughs> how I can do it. The exciting addition joins 27 other cities and over 4,000 players, including straight allies in the national. Oh, so they let straight people play. The straight allies are allowed to. Is that is that a team? The Columbus <laughs> straight allies. Today, we've got the Columbus Straight Allies taking on the Buffalo chapter of the National Gay Flag Football League. The collaboration is a game changer for bringing LBGTQ. I screwed that up. LGBT. Yeah, did I, I guess I said it right. Uh, LGBTQ plus organized football to Buffalo. Sometimes I screw up the order of letters, and I wonder if that's a problem. I think. Uh, I don't know. What if I throw it in there? What if I'm like TLBGQ? If your heart's in it, I think. Uh, People are like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, oh, you know, the TGBLTQs, <laughs> the BLTQGs. I think switching it up is the most equitable. I feel like they should all have their uh, turn at the front of the line, if you <laughs> ask me. That's how open minded I am. The Buffalo Bills <laughs> join other supportive NFL teams, including the Giants, the Patriots, the Jets, the Dolphins, the Cardinals, the Bears, the Commanders, and the Seahawks. Not the Packers? Come on, Packers. Uh, they're making our growing league even more inclusive. Our mission is to unite the community through a spirit of competition while celebrating our diversity by fostering an environment where everyone is welcome. We aim to build. I don't fucking care. So they're going to do one in the bills and everyone's like, Josh, the bills are gay. Well, guess what? There's a bunch of other ones that are gay and I don't mind it, frankly, but it is weird that they're making the gay people only play flag football. <laughs> Ooh, we do have one other. Quick, quick story before we wrap up sports. And I'm, I don't care. Solo episode. I'm going full sports today. I know I will have regular news articles too. Don't get me wrong. Many Roach reporters sending things into Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Do we remember the time we talked about the lucky sausage for the Minnesota Twins? Oh boy, that was. I don't remember how many episodes ago, but the Minnesota Twins had a lucky sausage that they would throw to one another when they would hit a home run. Some teams wear funny hats. They put a little funny hat on it. Who was it that I saw yesterday? I can't remember. I watched too many baseball games. But, um, oh, boy, oh, boy. Golly, who did I fucking watch? They had a, basically a funnel. Oh, it was the uh, Baltimore Orioles. They had a funnel. And uh, all the people that come in on the run, it was like uh, someone hit a grand slam. I can't remember whom. But, boy, they guzzled down the uh, the funnel there. Or maybe it was the team playing the Orioles. I can't fucking remember. I'm sorry. My brain is fried from the acid. But uh, the, the twins, they don't have any hats or any fun things. Like they were literally just had a, a sausage that was baking in the sun, basically. It was just kidding. I mean, I don't know if they put that thing in the cooler or what. They were just had a sausage. When that thing was, and it was sealed, by the way, so it wasn't like out and about, but it probably still smelled a little weird. And they're throwing it to each other. Well, we got an update on it from Mikey Schaff sending this in. The Minnesota Twins have been red hot. And they're after a slow start to the 2024 season, winning 16 of their last 18 games. Although Twins manager Rocco Baldelli, what a cool name, right? And hitting coach David Popkins have been praised. So is the unopened sausage that's become their lucky charm. 
Minnesota is currently on the road in Toronto and shocked fans while posting the picture of a lucky sausage looking down over the city from one of the most famous landmarks. The twins confirmed that their sausage had made it across the border and is pictured on the observation deck of the CN Tower, despite regulations about meat products crossing the border. I didn't even know the the lucky sausage. Not only has it survived so long, it's now also creating uh, international incidents. This is crazy. Is that it right there on the CN Tower? That's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I think it's a picture of a. Uh, it's looking a down, making it safely, safely to count it. Yeah, it's all. It's it's inside the CN Tower, looking down upon the city. Correct. Yeah. Golly, the Twins won their first game of the series against the Blue Jays, but were defeated on Saturday. If the lucky, if the sausage is lucky, then they should win the final game. But I don't know. They probably did after the time the story came out last week. Uh, but. Uh, Yeah, the sausage is still going. I wonder if they can get it back into America now. They have to go back over the border with it. I'm sure they just throw it in something, but who's in charge of the sausage? There's got to be a sausage handler that's getting it. Is it the PR team? Is it a bat boy? Is it uh, a rookie on the team? I want to know who's handling the sausage. They said it was double bagged and packed inside of a shoe, so I uh, I don't think they had to declare it. Yeah, they they, they definitely smuggled the sausage. That's a pretty big-ass sausage. Who's shoe is fitting that sausage they gotta have some big boys but no i know but i want to know specifically (laughs) whose shoe it is we'll get into the news here in a moment friends but i want to let you know today's josh potter show is brought to us by better help it's easy to feel jealous of other people's lives you know especially when they're showing off their new houses their flashy cars they got amazing relationships and it's being blasted in your face all over the internet therapy is actually an amazing tool to help you focus on what you want out of life instead of on what everybody else is doing you know i have to be on instagram all the time for my job and it's annoying to be on there i mean hell Mine is is about careers and about relationships and things like that. I see all those things all the time, and it's it's sometimes it gets you down, you know. But therapy again has helped me a great deal in uh, dealing with those types of things. BetterHelp is amazing. They are one hundred percent online therapy, and you can schedule sessions whenever works for you. So it's easy to fit in your daily life, and you can talk with a therapist by phone, message, or video call. Whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. I think that's the best part about it too. Is like you want to talk about this kind of thing, but you don't want to have to go to an office or whatever. And that seems daunting. Or you wake up and you're like, Ugh, I have to go to this office and pour my guts out. It's easier when it's right there on your phone online, right? Whenever it fits in your day. So right now go up and fill out a quick questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And you'll be on your way to a happier life. Stop, com- stop comparing and start focusing with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash Josh Potter today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Josh Potter. And now we get into the news. Oh, boy, we got something from Freddie Jackson. I don't know if it's the uh, former Bills legend Freddie Jackson out of Coe College, uh, but it's Freddie Jackson nonetheless. This article Starts out saying four Sri Lankan fishermen have died and another two are critically ill after consuming an unknown liquid from bottles that they found while at sea. So these guys are at sea, you know, and they find bottles floating around. They're like, cool, let's drink what's inside of it. I wouldn't. I mean, I know that they uh, sometimes they'll find bottles of booze or something in ship hulls that are sunken. I remember I went to uh, Portugal. I went to Lisbon and there was this store that sold just port wine or whatever, you know, and they had all these old bottles. You could get newer bottles, but then they had ones with like dust on them and crust on them and shit. And they were like some of them they found in like boats that were sunken. I don't know where the fuck they found some of these bottles, but I was like, yeah, you know, you're supposed to like want to drink an old ass wine or whatever like oh this year is a great year or whatever but i think there's probably a line and a threshold <laughs> right like do i really want to drink like some pirate port like it's probably half evaporated and shit and like the 
fucking cr- crust is on the goddamn bottle? I mean, I don't think so. So these guys, they just found bottles. Is this like a, that's not, they can't be like a literal picture. No. They're just like, they're throwing shade picture. at these guys being like, yeah, there were just bottles floating in the sea and these idiots picked them up and <laughs> drank it. We don't know if that was the case necessarily. Uh, maybe the two critically ill ones can explain. The sailors were said to be on a fishing trip when they retrieved the bottles around 320 nautical miles from Tangel. I think that's how you say that, a town on the southern coast of the island. The Sri Lanka Navy told reports the fishermen had drunk from the bottles thinking they contained alcohol like i thought it was booze it was probably who knows what it was uh maybe it was booze and there's like little things that got inside there i don't know director general of the sri lankan department of fisheries and aquatic resources uh told several outlets that the navy was attempting to bring them back to shore he reportedly said that the navy was providing medical attention to the men aboard the fishing vessel named the devon over concerns there were not enough time to return them to land for treatment the bbc has approached uh the sri lankan navy for confirmation and comments uh the fishermen had distributed some of the bottles to other crews operating in the area oh good so they poisoned (laughs) them too he added that attempts to notify those crews were being made the navy told the local media that the devon was being towed back to shore by another vessel the incident has reportedly prompted protests in the coastal town located why (laughs) why Why is there protests? Am makes, I missing something? No, here? no, no, no. It makes absolutely no sense. This really feels like a, a Darwin situation. Like you drink, you drink strange ocean bottle. You, you get whatever comes to you. That's like a recipe for a curse. I would just assume it's piss. Like, yeah, I mean, it's just, or it's just like, say the seawater got in there and you're just drinking like parasites and shit. Who knows what the fuck's inside a bottle floating in the sea, especially around there. I don't know much about Sri Lanka, but I'd imagine the sea's not too great. (laughs) I don't know. Or maybe whatever the hell they put it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Someone's going to be like, someone's going to write a comment. The the sea around Sri Lanka is crystal clear, (laughs) you scumbag. But I don't know why there was protests. They prompted protests in the coastal town located 120 miles from the capital, Colombo, calling for the sailors who were still alive to be returned to land. Uh, authorities are now investigating the contents of the bottle. We'll have to get an update on the the bottle contents. I don't know. I mean, was there? Is it? Uh, is there some sort of culture thing we're we're, we're missing here? I don't know. Someone maybe it's in. just like protesting to get the government to like pay attention and bring them back or something. It doesn't. It doesn't really make sense. This is the protest. It seems like it. Let's see if I can understand. Uh, they're like, we want the sailors back. I don't know what the hell they're gonna say. Oh, shit. oh, I know exactly what. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Catch Josh in Tengale on July 4th. <laughs> this is all. Pause it for me. This is all over a couple of retards who drink <laughs> bottle water. All right, this this says it's from two years ago and is maybe about... Uh, nope, this is about an economic crisis, unrelated protest. Oh, okay. You but just found a is, Sri Lankan protest and was playing it? in that town, so it's uh, oh, you just what Googled that protest that? would look like. Yeah. I don't know if it would look... I hope to the Lord it doesn't look <laughs> anything like that for these idiots. Anywho, next up we got a story that was sent in by Jen Brooks. I don't know if Jen's a first... I can't remember. Jen seems like maybe a first-timer. As far as Roach Reporter goes, I'm not sure either way. Thank you, Jen Brooks, and we hope to hear from you down the road. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com if you'd like to become a Roach Reporter. This one uh, is titled, Not a Way to Hit on a Woman. <laughs> Exciting. Wanting to talk to a woman, a man hatched a plan to soil their clothes with a mixture of his urine and flour. That's not how you get the woman's attention, I don't think. This is uh, more of a, a semen terrorism situation semen terrorism <laughs> mm-hmm. indeed was this the one George the terror yeah i call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers thank, thank you. you now watch this drive all right that's right Semen terrorism, folks. It's happening again. This one, not necessarily semen. It seems urine and flour. I think it can kind of go. I wonder if we should broaden 
semen terrorism to fluid terrorism at this point. But on June 20th, a man named Tan Jun Hao, I hope I said that right, a 31-year-old Malaysian man, was fined $1,200 after he pleaded guilty to using criminal force on one of the women. He followed a 26-year-old woman as she was going up an escalator from uh, the highway metro station at around 8.30 p.m. on April 9th. He then squirted the mixture, which he had earlier mixed, in a small plastic bottle onto her dress as she was walking along the nearby overhead bridge. What an odd situation. He first made this concoction in his home like a creepy scientist. <laughs> And then he put it in a bottle, a spray bottle, one we, you know, you'd go around, you know, maybe use for, I don't even know what people use those things for, you know, spraying uh, <laughs> hair or something. I mean, wa- water, I guess. I don't know. A spray bottle, like, you know, you're using for cleaning, I guess, right? And um, he wanted to talk to this woman. This is how he decided, you know, I'm going to, if I see a pretty lady out there, I'm going to approach her and spray her with my fluids. And then we'll get married. Tale as old as time, right? <laughs> so he then squirted the mixture, which he had earlier concocted, yada, yada, yada. Instead of stopping to talk to the woman after that, he walked right past her. She that Oh, now he's playing hard to get. This is something you probably learned with that guy. Uh, what's his name? Mystery. Tells you to neg the ladies. Maybe that's part of the epidemic here. He thought he was negging them. He's like, I'll spray them with piss and just walk right by. Then she'll fall in love with me. She initially thought that the mixture was bird droppings due to its smell. And then the stain grew bigger when she tried to wipe it off with tissue paper. Is that the flower reacting with the piss, making the piss spread? What a nefarious, awful, dastardly thing to do. The deputy public prosecutor uh, said that the accused intended to squirt the mixture on the clothes of the ladies, especially young ladies wearing dark colored bottoms, and then alert them that their clothes had been dirtied. What a crazy way to so he's trying to like white knight himself here he's like i'll make their clothes dirty with i don't know i could could i use mud could i use uh (laughs) i guess i could use like dye no i'll use piss i'll use piss and flour that's what that's perfect and then when i when they have a stain i'll go hey miss did you know (laughs) you have some piss on you (laughs) And then I'm the hero. She'll be like, why, thank you. No one alerted me to the piss on me. Thank you. Do you, we don't, do you want to have a drink? <laughs> he wanted to create opportunities for him to talk to these ladies. The man had admitted that he had done the same to two other unknown victims. He had also prepared red dye at home. Okay, that seems a little better. Intended to mix into the liquid. No, no, no. Keep the piss out of the, <laughs> the red dye is enough if you're going to do this awful strategy at least use something innocent <laughs> the strategy is terrible and then the choice to put p feels like why he should get jail time no he will get jail. you can't use piss i mean it's already an act of assault but then when you use piss or cum or whatever else a fluid bodily fluid that is like another that is a sexual assault at that point court documents do not state how the authorities managed to track the man down before he was caught oh i don't know maybe they were following the trail of piss stains on women there's a weird piss mist in the air i think the man is around what a wild story thank you sent in by jen brooks folks oh boy oh boy next up we have some uh, true true idiot woman bunch of them more old ladies with young boys, I'm afraid. Ashley McCollum seems to be the lead reporter on these types of stories. <laughs> She's always sending in stories of, it's often teachers, as we've noted in the past episodes, but this one, a judge in Ohio sentenced a social worker who confessed to having sex with a 13-year-old boy to 57 months in prison. Her name is Peyton Shires, 25, and this is her. This is making me sick to my stomach. Is that her? Exam. That's Peyton Shires. Golly. <laughs> and I know that's such a terrible, heinous, uh, troglodyte sort of uh, mindset to have to see this woman and go, God, she's hot. That's caveman shit. I understand. But it's something that is still at the top of my mind when I see these things. And I'm not saying they're any less heinous. I just think that they're hot. Idiot woman. I'm still an idiot nonetheless. <laughs> and ex- okay, so this woman, Peyton Shires, pleaded guilty in May to four counts of unlawful sexual misconduct with a minor, one count in- inducing panic, 
with a firearm. <laughs> well, that's <crime. laughs> let's get into that one. Uh, and two counts of intimidation to a victim or witness after striking a deal with prosecutors. Hmm. So she. So I'm just gonna guess that she fucked this. Well, she does have crazy eyes. This lady. Now that we're getting into the nitty gritty, that that seems empty behind them. So it seems like when you, what's the word, S- uh, smite her, she will have her retribution in some sort of vandalism or violence in exchange for this plea. Pro- okay. So uh, in exchange for this plea, prosecutors dropped the charge of intimidation and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So Shires had been facing over 28 years in prison for her offenses, but instead received 24 months for the four counts of unlawful sexual misconduct with a minor nine months for two counts of bubba dee boop. Uh, I want to know what she did. Okay, so the mother of the alleged victim contacted police in September after finding messages exchanged between her son and Shires. It's always these nosy mothers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> in one text, Shires allegedly asked the victim if he had deleted the videos and if his mom had seen the videos or messages. The mother gave the phone to investigators of the Columbus Police Department who, after obtaining a search warrant, discovered videos of the victim and Shires engaging in sexual relations. It's so crazy to me to... I mean, they must know that having sex with a 13-year-old is illegal. Why on earth would you go, let's video it? That seems insane to me. You're not operating with a full deck. And that brings me to my next point, folks. This is a social worker. In past examples, we have had teachers. We are not paying these occupations enough money. These are the types of people who are going into this line of work. Idiot woman! Those and men, idiot men too, they're going in there as well. Idiot man. Yeah, because these are the only people who are going to do these jobs at this point. Smart people aren't like, I want to be a social. There, you, get a, you get one shining star here and there. But for the most part, they're just d- morons being teachers now. <laughs> Pay them more money and make it a little more of a high-end <laughs> occupation so we stop having literally smooth-brained people in these occupations. That's These teachers are like... <laughs> Kind of retarded. That's why they're fucking 13-year-olds, because they're also, like, 13. (laughs) So police then listened in as the mother called Shires to confront her about the videos, at which time Shires admitted that she and the victim had engaged in sexual activity multiple times. The judge set a bond at $500,000 at that time, which Shires posted? What? What kind of social worker is this? She has half a million dollars. That's crazy. That's That's crazy. That's fucking absurd. So she's just a dumb girl with a rich dad who's like, I'm a social worker. I guess that's the, I mean, there's no way she's smart for doing any of this, by the way. And there's no way she's a, that good of a social worker where she makes 500. Look up the average salary of a Columbus, Ohio social worker. Two weeks into after being released on bond, police arrested Shires again on October 26th. Uh, after she arrived at the victim's home with a gun and threatened to kill the mother and then herself. Wow. This is a woman handling social cases for 50 to 70 grand a year. I mean, that's even kind of higher than I thought it was going to be. She's making her 50 to 70, grand, but she is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, she saw the, I mean, she, I, I got to see what this, I wish they would, I mean, I know that they're victims and they're children. You can't show, this 13-year-old must have been, (laughs) I mean, was this guy like, did he look like Glenn Powell? I mean, what the fuck are we doing here where she just lost her mind to the point where she's like, I will kill you, lady. She's going to kill the mother who went to the cops. And then she was like, I will kill you and I'll fucking kill myself right here. I'm going to get flagged on YouTube for act doing this act out, this theater piece. (laughs) Fucking YouTube. Sons of bitches. But what a hell of a fucking... I wish that was on video. Give me ring cam footage of that. Fuck watching her. Fuck the... I don't want to watch that at all. I don't want to see even one iota of that, any of the sexy time stuff. I want to see her waving a gun around at the mother, (laughs) like on a porch or something. Shires and her former employer are also facing lawsuit from the mother and her son. They are seeking damages in excess of $25,000 from Shires and the National Youth Advocate Program where she worked as a social worker. She was fired by the NYAP immediately after her arrest, but not after the boy's mother reported the social worker to her employer. Employer, of course. So they were like, what? <laughs> huh, we'll look into it. 
The NYP, uh, the NYAP responded in this lawsuit by denying any wrongdoing and saying that they were unaware of Shire's criminal activity. John Finch, the lawyer representing the plaintiff, says in the lawsuit that the mother of the alleged victim informed Shire's supervisor about inappropriate conduct between her son and and his. It was evidently his social worker and requested that she at least be removed from the case. The judge set the bond at five hundred thousand dollars. I can't believe she posted that. Yeah, why are they suing this organization when they could go after this lady who can post a half a million dollar bond? Well, she's in the, in the lawsuit as well. Um, oh, this is more. This is just the same article over again. Uh, interesting. Intre- I want to keep my eye on that one, folks. Who sent that one in? Ashley McCollum. She is our lead reporter of women being pedophiles. <laughs> I appreciate your hard work, Ashley. Keep up the good work on reporting on these idiot women. You keep saying this, you idiot woman. Idiot woman. Idiot. Oh, my God. We have another one. I don't know if this is a woman or a man. A former teacher at Taylor High School in Kokomo. Way down in Kokomo, Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take your piss. And your jizz in <laughs> bottles. Maybe Sri Lankans will drink it. That's what happens in this story here. A former teacher at Taylor High School in Kokomo has been charged after he reportedly groomed multiple students in the mid 2000s and early 2010s. He reportedly paid them to pee and ejaculate in bottles, spit in his drinks, and give him their used clothes and shoes. Mmm. That's who you want to be a teacher. Who, I mean, how does it take so long? It's like, do kids just have in their 10 year reunion a memory? Like, remember, uh, Mr. Uh, what the hell is it? I don't remember who this does it say the guy's name. I don't think it says his name here. Oh, well, whatever. Mr. Uh, we'll call him Jansen. Oh, Mr. Jansen. Yes. Remember, Mr. Jansen? He's always asking us to spit in his drinks. <laughs> what was that about? What a weirdo, right? What a wacky. I had a weird teacher once. He asked me to come in a, in a bottle for him. <laughs> Can you believe that? Your teacher probably. Every every school's got one. You know, it's one of those fucking stories at the end of the day. Uh, court documents filed on Monday in Howard County show 54-year-old Charles Jansen had been charged with one count of vicarious sexual gratification, a level four fel- felony. That's such a weird charge. I've heard it before, but vicarious sexual gratification. Insane. Uh, During the interview, the former student said counseling helped uncover the impact that Jansen's alleged actions had on him. After counseling, the student family alleged that similar conduct reportedly occurred between Jansen and multiple other students uh, because this kid evidently was told to what? Uh, He was a language arts teacher at the high school and reportedly groomed one student to perform certain vicarious sexual reflect uh, related acts for money. So at least he was paying him Uh, to satisfy Jansen's paraphilic and masochistic sexual desires. They really make this guy out to be a fucking creep. And I like that. That's good. That's hilarious though, that they throw such wild language. It's almost like I'm reading uh, what's that uh, new show? The dragons, <laughs> the house of dragons. House, house of the dragon. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I can't remember. I'm trying to remember references from that show and I fucking can't. I'm too fried. Oh my God. Oh, the Targaryens <laughs> and their paralytic and masochistic sexual desires. During the interview, the former students said counseling helped uncover blah, blah, blah. The court documents detail alleged instances between Jansen and a couple of students. In one case, Jansen reportedly began to show interest in a sophomore around 2006. I guess when you're like a kid that young, you're thinking, piss in this bottle for... 50 bucks i'm down i still got i'm getting mr jansen call me up you got a lot of piss for you he was doing it for five to ten dollars you gotta up that price oh that's it well yeah. i guess that for the kids you i mean especially in the 2000s with inflation being what it was i thought 50 bucks no it says five to ten my bet i was looking at it in a blurry out the corner of my eye uh in addition to those requests jansen who requested that the student call him i guess that's bitch yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a fucking little bitch indeed. That's so Asking funny. Students to call you. Will bitch. you call me a bitch? Oh my god, I can just see this teacher in my head. See if there's any pictures of this guy anywhere, because I can see him in my head. He's a language arts teacher too. You know, he had glasses. He was a little wafy. Uh, well, for lack of a better word, bitch for sure. Is that him there? That's wild. I wonder what he sounds like, because he's like, "Will you call me a little bitch?" He's got like a high voice and shit. Jansen would ask the student to urinate after he had sex, telling the student there would be traces of semen in the urine. What is this guy, the double soul shaman? I mean, golly. 
That's what he always says. Got to have some. I have some semen in my urine. That's. Uh, I mean, to also assume that your student is having sex. He's like, you getting laid out there? Oh, that's so cool. Next time you pee after sex, could you just can you give me? Can you give me some of that? The pee. Yeah, with <laughs> with some cum in it. You know. Or when you jerk off or whatever, I'll give you ten dollars. <laughs> you can't, you can't ask. You got to have some money where it makes it like, oh, there's no way I'm giving up this cherry exchange. <laughs> ten dollars is is also adding to the psychological damage. I feel like to do it for such little <laughs> money, it's adding to this. That's actually making it worse. After each transaction, Jackson would require the student to sign a receipt. <laughs> Something the student said did not know the purpose of, according to the documents. This is something that was featured multiple instances with multiple students. Jensen's like, I just want proof of like that I did. That. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sign her, sign this receipt. Maybe he was acting as if they were like NDAs or something like that. An additional student reported similar instances to the Indiana State Police. The document said that the student reported behavior to school administrators, specifically the requests surrounding Jensen reportedly asking him to urinate in bottles, which reportedly led to Jensen's termination. Yeah, they're like, hey, we're getting uh, some of these kids saying that you're telling them to piss in bottles, Charles. Is that Charles? (laughs) It's not just one kid. If it was one kid, I'd be like, all right, it's a little maybe it's not right. It's been four kids. (laughs) You're fired, dude. Go ask the hobos to piss in a bottle for 10 bucks. You know, why doesn't he do that? He wants that gross young, young piss. In April 2023, an individual reportedly confronted Jansen at the St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Kokomo. Way down in Kokomo. <laughs> Jansen's place of employment at the time. He, oh, of course, he works at a fucking church. You fucking Catholic churches. You, God, I fucking. I can go for go off for days, but it's a comedy show. The document said that the individual records uh, or the individual recorded the conversation confronted Jansen about the following reported sexual behaviors, urine and semen in bottles for money. We already knew that providing shoes to Jansen so he could lick them clean, spitting in Jansen's drink, chewing up food and spitting it back in the wrapper so Jansen can eat it. God, this guy's a disgusting disgusting man signing the receipt for items jansen purchased so jansen could keep track of what he bought for the oh so they had like a per diem he's like you got to get the food so that's another three dollars <laughs> Ugh. maybe you need a uh, do you need to buy a red bull so you can piss better i mean he's got like a per diem for them jansen did not deny any of the accusations the court document said Jensen did not deny any of the accusations. The court documents said he made statements saying he was sorry for how he made the students feel and that he had changed. The individual asked how many young men had reached the level of putting semen in the bottles for him. Jensen replied, probably three or four, but clarified not while they were students. Oh, so he waited. He's like, when you're an adult, what I'm going to need you to do. (laughs) He's like, congratulations on graduating. Boy, oh boy, I think you're ready for the adult world. Do me a favor. Officials with the Indiana State. So this isn't Kokomo, Hawaii. Way down in Kokomo, Indiana. (laughs) Officials with the Indiana State Police said that Jansen reportedly has sexual paraphilic and masochistic disorder. That's a disorder now? (laughs) I think think if you're doing this, it's definitely a disorder. I guess. (laughs) I just think he's a fucking loony. I mean, I guess it's a disorder. But that's like saying that, like, I mean, that's a slippery slope, isn't it? No, I mean, also on that list, he he was apparently having these kids piss in a crock pot. Like this guy just had. Oh, a piss that's fetish wild! To, to yeah, he just. I want to. I want to make a nice piss stew. Yeah, like you. Could, oh my god! Imagine the smell of multiple people's piss in a crock pot. Oh <laughs> god. Oh, my God. Is this is that where this goes? Because I'm going to keep reading this article. Uh, it derives in sexual pleasure. This OK, so they're explaining this. Is this the defense that they're doing or is this what the Indiana State Police is accusing him of having? It derives sexual pleasure and gratification from ingesting urine and semen. He uh, and that he desired that doesn't seem like that's a that if he was just doing it with a consensual partner of age, 
Yeah, like I'll that get would a be. Wouldn't that be like this, pay that pay that money to a uh, prostitute? We'll charge or you more just than find five somebody who really yeah. loves you and is like he just likes piss. It's weird, you know. <laughs> I mean, like it doesn't seem like it's that crazy of a thing if it was among sexual or among like consensual uh, sexual yeah, partners. You can you can find those people on the internet. I feel like you you didn't even try. But so to chalk it up to some sort of disorder makes me just. I'm like he's a pedophile. That's like saying being a pedophile is a disorder, which I guess someone can. I mean, I'm not wise enough to make this these arguments, but. Uh, that feels like what's going on here. He also desires to feel humiliated and integrated. So many people do go go down Wall Street and meet any of those fuckers. Uh, it's sickening, but unfortunately, it happens far too often. We find that sexual predators like Mr. Jensen tend to find positions that allow them to work with children to give them access to satisfy their urges and their abhor- abhorrent behavior. And that's exactly what happened here. Indeed, it did. That's why you got to be more weary of these people. I sound like Sebastian. Be more weary of these people. What are you doing, you pedophiles? <laughs> I think the biggest thing is is going to protect dozens and dozens of future victims that have not come forward and blah, blah, blah. Now that they're talking, they're talking about this. What the outcome of this case will provide. Where did it say the thing about the crock pot? It was, it was in the, it was at the bottom of that list where they were. At, it was right underneath. Oh, the I missed it. Thing. What a fucking thing to miss. Oh my lord. Do we have video of this uh, roller coaster accident? Because that's a good way to end the show. <laughs> this is from Eric. It says a man died after being hit by a roller coaster in Ohio amusement park on uh, Wednesday. I doubt there's video. Let's watch the report. I love hearing the reporters say, a tragedy occurred at the, uh, let's see if I can guess it before we play. A tragedy occurred at King's Island today after a man was struck at 68 miles per hour by the Banshee roller coaster, suffering traumatic injury. Here's a statement from, I don't know. Go ahead. Let's watch it. Let's see if how much I got it right at the beginning. Always local, always now. Always local. This is Fox 19 always now, now Morning Extra. And uh, good morning, everyone. Coming uh, on the air here at 9 o'clock with news that we just confirmed uh, moments ago uh, involving the uh, incident at Kings Island last week. Yeah, so we now have it confirmed from the Hamilton County coroner. The man that was reportedly hit by the Banshee roller coaster at Kings Island has died. Yeah, Mason police uh, identifying him as 38-year-old Artonio Nelson. Pause it uh, for me. He's believed to have been... That, uh, that is... Th- these people's JFK moment right there. They Did you hear them? They're like, we're just getting word that the man struck by the Banshee roller coaster has died. This is their Cronkite <laughs> moment for these people. Let's hear why he got struck by the roller coaster. Hit by the Banshee coaster uh, when he entered a restricted area to retrieve his keys. This was a little after <laughs> 8 o'clock last week. Oh, the guy died uh, Nelson terrible, but... sustained serious injuries, flown uh, to UC Medical Center, uh, where he later died. Now, the park says the coaster, well, it reopened Saturday morning. Uh, investigators have been uh, looking at, you know, what may have happened. Uh, again, yeah, I think we, we have know. been told uh, that, and you know, Van from Kings Island, that he did enter that restricted yeah. area. So he had, uh, according to a source I have at Kings Island, Frank, yeah, really he did ask more than once, I, I need to go get my keys. Hey, well, you can do that at the end of the day. Yeah. That's always the policy and that's of the these policy. parks. And, and it's in that small print and, and all that. And yeah. just, you know, uh, so the, not the decision made, apparently. Um, and uh, <laughs> wow. jump the fence, which is like an eight foot tall fence. You yeah, always wow. have to kind of fall over the All other right, side. All right, we get it, lady. It's uh, his fault. Just, uh, just so sad. And very now sad. he's passed, and, and it, it's going to be very, very difficult for these employees at Kings Island. Oh, wow. Uh, God, uh, obviously. Damn. Not to mention the family. Yeah, pa- pause absolutely. it, pause it, pause it. I mean, that's wild that's that was the most i did not watch that leading up to this i just thought it would be fun to listen to these people like to have their shining moment on the air of being like the banshee roller coaster has w- killed one man and now it's they're not only are they shaming the victim they went to great lengths to shame the victim i don't know if this segment has to last a certain amount of time and they're blocking and they have to go to another one but this lady did not have to really she's like hey, they told him they told him that he can't go. You got to wait till the end of the day. And he still climbed that eight foot fence. That's a hard fence to climb. And other decisions were made. They basically said the man died because he was an idiot. That's what they said. Basically, they're like, the man was idiot man. And he <laughs> climbed the fence and went into a restricted area. By the way, it's restricted. And that's the policy at these parks. You know, they get it to you by the end of the day. And uh, this is really actually difficult and terrible for these employees. Of Kings Island and the people operating the Banshee roller coaster. Oh, yeah, by the way, the family's doing this. <laughs>
not the fam that who knows if this is like some dad at the park with his kids and he's like i gotta go get my fucking keys and he does it he's probably like a like either uh just kind of like a fuck this guy or he was a little drunk or what have you but he decided to take that fence on and go sneak in and get his keys timed it poorly the roller coaster struck him he dies i mean that's going fast and uh who knows maybe he's fucking family had to watch that and this lady's like oh can you book the poor employees at the park who are dealing with this terrible day they had to shut down till saturday that one ride can you believe it what a hell of a video go back and play that little sentence again that's a great way to end the program jump the fence which is like an eight foot yeah, tall fence this park, you yeah. always have to kind of fall is over it? the other side um just uh it's just really so hard sad. to jump and very now sad. he's passed and, and it, it's going to be very very difficult for these employees oh at is Kings it island oh, I'm, um, obviously I not mean, to mention the family yeah absolutely. oh not to mention the family old, we're obviously alive, not sure. oh my god these those two that guy's like oh the banshee roller coaster you had a hell of a voice that and a wide neck. What what market of the world is that? It's uh, Ohio. Oh, that's correct. Yeah, Ohio. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Mm, boy, oh boy, what a hell of a show, folks. Thank you so much to Alex. Thank you to Kirsten. Thank you to you for being here for another solo episode. We have some fun guests coming up in the next couple of weeks, folks. You're going to very much enjoy some of your favorites out there in the comedy world. Some first timers here on the program as well. So make sure you come back, make sure you rate, review, subscribe, all of that. And uh, by the way, come see me live. Next time you can see me live outside of the city of Los Angeles is Dallas. I will be there the 26th and 27th of July at the Dallas Comedy Club. Tickets can be found at thejoshpotter.com or right below in the description. And also, uh, I'm going to be coming to Des Moines. I'm going to be coming to uh, Omaha. I'm going to be coming to Boston, all these places in August. Go check out thejoshpotter.com. See the whole calendar. It goes into September as of now, and we'll be adding dates very, very shortly. Uh, other than that, folks, joshpottershow at gmail.com is the email where you can send in things. I got to give a shout out uh, to uh, this gentleman here who sent in the uh, the musical number. Where the hell is it? Aha. Uh-huh. Bitaman, I did because he has a different name on his email, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, Bitaman. There we go. Bitaman, thank you so much. This is a chill, chill beat. I appreciate you, and thank you to all the people who sent in the articles today. And I hope you do in the near future. We love you. We'll see you next Wednesday right here on the Josh Potter Show. Roach, we shotgun the beers, ain't got time for a toast. It's the only place to get for sports like for real, son. He taught us nobody's more sus than Russell Wilson. Here's the deal, son. Won't find us in Walmart. Josh Potter, keep it frank, kind of like a ballpark. It wasn't nothing talking all that jism. Turns out there's a lot of SEMA terrorism. Now it's time we hit them. Bringing Votto to the plate. Roachy, you warned with Chase O'Donnell the Great. Let me stop for a second, because it's Ask Marty time, because it's idiocy. You know I can't abide. Not a fan of these guys. Gonna damage the rise. Worse than the host known as the Roach. Leave an idiot woman standing on the side. Or looking like she just tripped into a Mo. I'ma kill this Henny beat like uh uh murder. Been in more studios than most have ever heard. I'm pleased to be listening. Hit that like and subscribe. So many bills have got, got the mafia, mafia vibe. A lot to describe like a roach reporter. Teacher on OF, don't report her. Trying to live life with my mannequin wife and my mannequin kids have got some mannequin right. Been a fan of this guy since a roach motel. Couple hundred weeks in, still funny as hell. From the tick cups to back sis and blind eyes, Potter has one of the best, best shows of all time. Now watch this drive. Pop a couple tall cans with the roach king and caught the vibe. Ready to pour more. Scurry out the floorboards hit like comment and subscribe. Yeah.